hit Windows plus A on your keyboard or click right around here on the taskbar and you'll bring up this overlay. You've got a volume slider, some quick settings, some media control buttons, and then the song title, artist, and... Wait a second, hold up. Is that a fully playable version of the classic arcade game Snake where the album art's supposed to be? Played via keyboard controls? Why yes, yes it is. And I'm still kind of shocked by how well it works. This all started a few months ago when I came across a news article about how someone had made a version of Snake that played in your browser's URL address bar. This was wild to me and sent me down a rabbit hole of other crazy places people had programmed Snake to play, such as in the little website Favicon or my personal favorite, this guy who pointed a microscope at his monitor and got Snake to play at the sub-pixel level using individual RGB lights inside of a pixel to render the snake. There was something fascinating to me about the way these projects took UI elements that were clearly meant to be used in a specific way for a specific purpose and instead used them for something completely different. I dreamed of one day joining this elite group of obscure location snake programmers, but I didn't think much more of it. Then one day, I was listening to Spotify in my web browser and I clicked down here to adjust my volume and bam, there it was in all its glory, the Windows Media Controls overlay. This was going to be my chance. That little 64 by 64 pixel album art window was my canvas and I was not going to rest until I had produced a masterpiece of a snake game to play inside of it. First thing was first, make a website that can play snake. That was the easy part. A little bit of HTML and then JavaScript for the game logic, and we had a functioning snake game where the snake could be controlled by the arrow keys. But now we needed to figure out how to get the game screen from here to here. It turns out this was a lot easier than I expected. You see, I thought we were going to have to constantly replay a very short sound, changing the album art for that sound every time to the current game screen. But it turns out as long as something is playing, we can use the Media Session API to update the song's metadata at any time, and it will immediately refresh the song info in the overlay, including the album artwork. No need to loop through a short audio clip. We can just play a long, silent MP3 file and update the album artwork at will. At this point, everything has been going absolutely perfectly, and I'm thinking the project is gonna be done within the hour. But this is when the problems began. Enter the focus paradox. I would start up the game and then pull up the media controls overlay. This would bring up the game and it would be displaying perfectly, but no matter what buttons I hit, I could not get the snake to turn. I would click back on my browser tab and try the controls there and they would work fine, but that would close the overlay bring the overlay back up, and the controls would stop working. You see, in order for a web page to read your keyboard presses, it needs to be in focus, which makes sense. You don't want web pages spying on your keyboard presses in the background. But bringing up the overlay removes focus from the browser tab, and clicking back on the web page to give it focus again closes the overlay. So we're at an impasse. We can see the game without being able to control it, or control the game without being able to see it. That's right. The clip I showed you at the beginning of this video was a stone cold lie. You cannot play Snake in the media controls overlay using the arrow keys. After some further research, it was looking like the project was dead in the water. My dreams of playing Snake where no man had played Snake before were going to stay just that, dreams. But then I found the loophole. While you can't use the arrow keys or most of the keys on your keyboard, you can use the media buttons. These four buttons on my keyboard, stop, previous track, play pause, and next track, are the only buttons capable of communicating with the web page in the background without closing the media controls overlay. This was our ticket. And with that, I coded up my game to use the media buttons as controls instead, and we were back in business. Now, media buttons on keyboards are a little weird. Of the four keyboards I have laying around in my house, every single one had a different layout. One of them had only the play pause button, two had play pause as well as previous track and next track, and only my PC keyboard had the fourth stop button. I decided to go with using only two buttons to control the snake, previous track to turn left and next track to turn right. This way most of the keyboards would be supported. I actually found out after I had completely finished this project that you can also just use your mouse to click the on-screen media control buttons in the overlay and I didn't even need to adjust my code at all, which was awesome. 
It's quite possibly the worst snake playing experience I've ever had, but at least it gives an option for you poor souls with only one media button on your keyboard. The last problem I had to solve for this project was flickering. It doesn't quite come through perfectly in these screen recordings, but the flickering that occurs every time the screen updates can be pretty annoying. And unfortunately, it just seems to be a limitation with how Windows refreshes the album art, clearing the old image first before showing the new one. How dare the Windows 11 developers not keep gaming in mind when designing the media controls overlay? I did add a feature that minimizes it a little, by putting in a slider to change the background color of the game. You can also use the play pause button to cycle through background colors in game. If you match the game's background color to the background color of the overlay, it makes the flickering a lot less annoying because it's only the snake and food that flicker instead of the whole screen. So with a few finishing touches like adding difficulty selection with different grid sizes and keeping track of the current score and high score in the song title and artist, that is snake in the Windows Media Controls overlay. You can try it out for yourself at the website in the description, and this project is completely open source, so you can check out the full code on my GitHub, also linked in the description. This might be the end of the road for me in terms of media controls overlay game development, which is not a thing, but hopefully someone out there can pick up the mantle. We gotta see someone getting Doom running in this thing. Subscribe for more weird tech projects. I'm Jake, and thanks for watching Can I Fix It?